If there was ever a topic that we know a lot of you guys want to know everything there is to know about, it's sex. We asked you guys for how you feel about the way sex ed is approached in schools in America, and nearly 80% of you agreed that there are a lot of improvements that need to be made. So we went straight to one of the experts. Francisco Ramirez has a master's in public health, specifically focusing on sex and sexual wellness, and he has traveled the entire world talking about how to improve your sexual health. And he shared with us a little bit about some of the biggest misconceptions about sex and ways that education can be improved in the US. Yay, I love my work. <laughs> can we just have a moment for your background though, by the way? like getting every like sleepover vibe. That Truly, it really is. So Francisco has had quite the career. He's worked with the UN, like I said, on the day that we were talking on the phone, he had just been on a four hour call with UNICEF. He is literally a sex superhero. One of the keys to teaching about sex is to do a ton of listening. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Francisco Ramirez, your MTV Voices correspondent, ready for another Global Streetcast. I'm super excited to be in Marshall today in the Queer Liberation March for Black Lives. I would say just bring me more variation, if nothing else. Like yes. sex, uh, so much of this was in the same boring ass yeah. lane. He said that he has gotten into this work years and years ago because he was just fed up with feeling so disparaged by people who were treating this topic, sex and sexual health, as something that they ought to be ashamed about. Long story short, sex stuff there, Planned Parenthood came to New York, work at the UN now for 15 years as a consultant, started an amazing app called OK So that everyone should download, uh, where we give free sex advice um, and all sorts of other things, including sex advice in the park. But I feel really um, fortunate to be able to have talk about sex and said words that people usually don't say in UN buildings or outside of UN buildings around the world. Um, and, and like in a public forum, it's 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 like, it's my greatest joy. I love it so much. Oh my gosh, everyone, I'm so excited. I'm headed to Jordan. I've never been to Jordan before, but I'm headed there now tonight. Uh, I'm at JFK right now. I'm going to be working with the United Nations High Commission on Refugees, and we'll be working on uh, talking about sexual exploitation and abuse, sexual harassment, gender and power dynamics, and a lot more. People often, and I wondered even before, like, oh gosh, how much work is there to do in the places I worked? You know, Afghanistan, or um, you know, ev ev all over the all of the globe, where there's whether there's war happening or recently war, etc. Um, and people often say, gosh, there's a lot to be done there, right? And I'm like, yeah. But have you looked at the United States of America? Like, hello. We have to like really rethink some things about how we think about ourselves, our bodies, and really how we treat other people when it comes yeah. to sex and sexuality. I'm, I'm fired up. I'm fired I'm up. I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm getting fired up too. I love it. So I was curious from Francisco what he felt was one of the largest misconceptions that he's seen in his work about sexual health. So what are some things that we often get wrong um, that you are wrong, that your body is wrong? I get so many questions, um, questions that you don't hear in other forms, but in the park, I get lots of questions about my labia look like this. Right. And let me tell you, it's nothing you've ever seen before. And I'm like, well, that may be true, but I would bet that your labia fall within the realm of normal human biological diversity or you know, physiological diversity. Um, so my point there being that we have this idea that our bodies are supposed to look a certain way, that our bodies are supposed to work in quotes a certain way, um, that sexual desire and sexual attraction are supposed to, supposed to follow certain um, pathways or trajectories that you might find in say like a textbook, but that's not, at all necessarily the case. So the biggest misconception, one of the biggest misconceptions is that something about me is inherently wrong. That by me being me, by me being a woman, by me being queer, by me being trans, by me being none of the above, but something else, right? By me just being a sexual human, uh, by me having desires that maybe other people told me I shouldn't, 
I now deserve negative consequences. And I think we've really internalized that so that when someone comes to a clinic and they're like, or comes to me and they're like, well, you know, I got gonorrhea, but you know, what can I, you know, of course, like I'm, I messed, I really messed up. Yeah. Did you, or were you a normal human being doing your best, trying to live as a sexual human being, taking certain precautions on your own terms? Oh my gosh, I'm doing the happy dance. Because I'm in Illinois, I'm going to the University of Illinois, I'm gonna be a guest in resident. What does that mean? I hang out in the dorm for a whole week. Uh, I live there and at night I give a presentation on all things related to sex, like uh, the science of flirting, the art of breaking up, what else, less shame, more orgasms. In addition to, am I normal? Like once, when we're dealing with am I normal, we can, I can deal with that. But oftentimes I don't, we don't have the opportunity to even have have those conversations because um, one of the wackest messages that we've learned is like, you can't talk about this. You act, not just like, oh, we shouldn't, we don't, but like, you can't talk about it. Mm -hmm. If you do, bad things will happen. You will uncover, you will open Pandora's box. Mm -hmm. So I would, you know, encourage people um, to see if they can talk about it. Now for a lot of people, it's not gonna, it's gonna feel like uh, I can only talk about it to a degree. That's okay. We'll notice that. Yeah. What, what about a journal? Right? Yeah. How are the ways that we can safely for ourselves have conversations, um, introduce conversations about sexuality? Roles. Yeah. A lot around gender roles for effing sure. Mm -hmm. A lot around other roles. So roles of like, hey, I see this all the time within the queer community. Well, I'm not a, well, my grander profile said, well, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like, you know, I'm, 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 I'm supposed to assume this position or they, you know, are putting this position on me, right? But as opposed to like, who am I? What, what are all the different ways that I am sexual, right? So putting ourselves into boxes, um, unless you're into that, you know, yeah. um, isn't, hey, um, okay, just whatever it may be, um, isn't, uh, isn't going to be helpful. So given that one of those big misconceptions about sex is that people feel that they can't even talk about it, access to information is a huge barrier to understanding when it comes to maintaining solid sexual health. And especially when you think about what information is shared in public schools, you see a lot of gaps. There's not necessarily sexual education for people in LGBTQ relationships. There's not a sex ed course for people with disabilities. There are all of these spaces that people just don't automatically talk about when it comes to sex. As a sexually active queer person in New York, I'm really interested in discussing the idea of how to conserve energy as a person living with chronic pain to make more energy and more space for a more loving romantic sex life. What are the things that we all and you wish you could tell a partner before you start hanging out. Since my boyfriend moved to LA, we've just been having a little bit of issues with how to be sexually attracted to one another while being in a long distance kind of relationship. What is yeah. the weather pattern of your mind in terms of what you've been told? Growing up Caribbean, it's just like, you're a whore if you have sex before marriage, or like, like you're, they just shame it so much. What are all of the ways that our sex ed or conversations around sexuality are not accessible? Two axes, at least. One is that we don't see accurate human diversity and representation. I'm talking about in terms of body size, ability, um, uh, age, um, uh, race, ethnicity, um, skin color. Um, uh, and then on the receiving end, how is that information or those even positive role models sort of delivered or not delivered to someone? So there, of course, the digital divide, right? Or the secondary digital divide, where a lot of the times we see people creating the content, this amazing, great content, are people who have their own privileges to be able to have a fancy camera or whatever it may be. Um, so accessibility is more important, I think, than people could even imagine. And after talking with Francisco for a little while, it became pretty clear that a, a common issue that he sees in people of all backgrounds and of all levels of education with sex is an issue of confidence. And he says that even he struggles with it sometimes. Even and absolutely, and especially for me, someone who works on this 24 seven for years, 
confidence around sex, sexuality, body is a thing for me. It's not a thing for all humans, but it's a thing for many, many humans, right? Is this too large, like I said, or too small, or too weird, in quotes, looking? Um, uh, if I tell you who I really am, will I be shut down? If I'm shut down, can I stand back up again and move forward? Full support, love, and appreciation to everyone who may listen or watch, listen to this or watch this and they feel like, gosh, you know, at the end of the day, yeah, I'm not so sexually confident. Well, here's the truth. The very few of us are. All the, like, people who like flexing, etc. And then they come down and talk, sit down and, and chat with me in the chair in the park about their sex lives. And then within a minute, like some straight dude who's flexing 24 seven is like crying because he's never told somebody this drama thing about himself. Oh That's real life. That's happened more than once. It's happened more than twice. Like we don't share that yeah. we are not confident, but so many of us are in different ways. Yeah. So with this work, one of Francisco's missions is to really just make sex a topic that people can talk about in regular, everyday conversation so long as they're comfortable. And something that I think is really cool that he's taken on is this project that he calls Free Sex Advice, where he will literally just post up in parks around New York City with a sign that says Free Sex Advice, and anyone and everyone can come and sit down with him and have an impromptu sex therapy session, which is awesome. I wanted conversations, open conversations about sexuality, and even the I idea that people can have conversations about sexuality, I wanted that more open and I wanted it embedded into our day-to-day -day landscape and fabric. Yeah. I love being in Union Square, for example, and someone is walking by with their kids and then, and then I just wave like this and then they're like, and then if they come over, then we end up having an intergenerational conversation about wow. you name it, right? And so, so much of it happens that way where someone's super curious. They do the thing where they like hover by the chair and they're just like, yeah. oh, well, and then the next thing, this has happened a lot recently well, when I was out there. Then they'd like sit down and then they would tell their boo or their honey or their whatever be like, or their kids sometimes like, yeah. Hey, just go to Forever 21, which is not good. Hey, just go to like Whole Foods or whatever. Mommy needs, <laughs> mommy needs a minute or whatever. And I've had people swap. So I've had like the partner oh go to like Whole Foods or the Cap One Bank or whatever. Yeah. And, and they have their thing and they're like, okay, I got to tell you this thing. This <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And then they come back and they're like, no, honey, yeah. And then they're like, but maybe you should sit. And then I don't divulge anything. That's not my not my role, but then we have, you know, kind of several conversation and then we come together. And when it comes to sex education in America, obviously there are a ton of things that need to be addressed and a ton of different opinions on how to go about addressing them. But for Francisco, his biggest takeaway is that sometimes it really is just about taking a step back and listening. Yes, we talk about absence. Absolutely. Like, guess who's absent right now? Like, I live alone. Like, absence is a real ass thing. Like. Yeah by choice, you know, by less choice, right? right. Uh, whatever it may be, like, maybe we want to be having sex, maybe we just want to know about our bodies, how they function, what's normal, <clears throat> am I normal, right? Um, we want to know about healthy relationships, what does a healthy relationship look like, or how do I feel more, language that I like a lot more is like, how do I feel respected in a relationship? How do I show respect in a relationship? Sometimes when, 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 I, when I'm asked to talk about sex ed, uh, they really push for STI slash STD talks, right? Where it's just like, you know, very mean girls coach, like, if you have sex, this will happen kind of thing, right? right. Um, which, listen, like, yeah, let's talk about STIs. Let's talk about STDs. Let's talk about the ways that we can be safer. Um, but that, in a lot of ways, does a disservice. If I'm just looking at you as a vector, for infection, then I'm not seeing you as the whole potentially, sexu potentially sexually person you are, including if you're asexual. You have some relationship to your body in some way. We've totally done a disservice to humans around sexuality, especially in this country, when it's patriarchal sex ed, et cetera, and like top down and like, listen to me, like, you know, mean girls coach, et cetera, because these bad things are gonna happen. And I've, we've silenced, your voices and that's where we've 
totally messed up. If we had more belief in you and your voices, we would be so much better off. And even if your voice was wrong, we'd be in a place where we'd be able to talk about it, right? But we, once you get something wrong, once you like do the thing that you shouldn't have been doing that your parents are not freaking out about, et cetera, um, a lot of times the conversations shut down and that's because we haven't laid the ground where people can, where people can actually have them to begin with. But even so, there are a ton of people that are not necessarily in elementary, middle, or high school or college right now having sex ed courses in the first place. And their idea of sex is constantly contributed to by what they see every day in the media, with friends who are in relationships, whatever it is. And one thing that Francisco really wanted to clear up is that there is no big secret to optimum sexual health. It really just depends on you, your preferences, and having that internal dialogue with yourself. I remember growing up, and I still see it all over the place, where it's like, oh, the secrets to sex, the secrets to like sexual pleasure, how to turn this person on. And thankfully now I see a little more of like, how the secrets to turning yourself on, etc. I don't know how many secrets there are. Like, think about, feel, check in with yourself as much as you can to think about what feels good. What do you imagine feels good, mm -hmm. right? And then think about, is it, do I feel safe enough leaning towards that, right? Mm -hmm. And if when you do, maybe you should lean towards it, right? All this to say that the sexual sort of, the one's blueprint or pathway to sexual pleasure, it looks nothing like you would see in most movies, especially more, most porn, right? Yeah. What happens, this is what I know for a fact from free sex advice, the cool ways that people think and about their sexuality and experience sexual pleasure is so uniquely diverse, right? Mm -hmm. That somebody wants to be eating while they're doing it, or they wanna like have this conversation, or they're safe, you know, they're really into like Harry Potter, um, and talking about him or like doing some kind of Harry Potter play. This is how I've gotten that question or that comment more than most people. Lean towards a thing that feels good to you. And if you're not in a place where you feel safe to do that yet, notice that and let, let me tell you that you're okay for not feeling like you're in a place where you want to do the sexual experimentation that you have in the back of your head. But yeah. please, please notice that it's there and that it's something that you want to do. Yeah. And when it comes down to it, despite Francisco's many, many years of giving advice and his expansive expertise on this topic, he firmly believes that a lot of the answers to your questions or the questions you might have are within you. He can't necessarily answer what you like, what feels good to you. Things like that need to be a conversation that you have with yourself. And he says that he can guide you along with that, but he can't always finish the sentence for you a lot of those answers are indeed, just like you're saying, Jesse, are like, they're within you to some degree. So it's cool. I like showing up on your campus, having conversations, talking to the like end of the night, but like, you know, a lot of, a lot of the answers are going to be specific to you and they're for you to figure out. But sometimes they're like questions or just stories or things that we need to sort of say, right? So find it listen to what it's actually trying to tell us, whether that's our gut or wherever it may be. Um, and then listen, this, this is going so real woo, and I'm cool with that. Um, listen, to what it, listen to what it says. Get still enough to like, find an instinct. High five, everyone watching. High fiving. No, I, elbows, sorry, air elbows. Oh yeah. <laughs> air elbow, everyone. Air, air, air elbow everyone for, for making it this far in the video, right, because um, you are going to be the people, the people who are being more thoughtful about their themselves and their bodies and their sexuality are the people that, um, I appreciate everyone, but I especially appreciate you for saying like, this may be difficult, I may not have the answers, you may not have the answers, but I'm going to do my darndest to go seeking it out. Like, you are awesome! So let us know what you guys think. When you look back at your own sex ed experience, what was it like and what kind of things do you wish you had known back then that you know now? And when you take a step back, do you think the entire sex ed system in America needs to be changed or improved in some way? Thank you guys so much for watching and let us know what topics you'd like us to cover next and we'll go after it for you.